So exactly the same arrangement in our ceiling rows and pendant. We've got our blocks at the top. We've got a block of two, which is our switching line conductor. We've got a block of three, which is usually identified as loop. And then another block of three, which is our neutral connections, but we're in the old cable colors. So let's start with neutral. And our new system, we know from our previous videos that the neutral was a blue conductor. And it will also be a blue conductor coming down in your flex that goes down to your pendant. So that would be blue in old and new systems. But we can see here that our neutral colour is black. So pre-2004, the neutral colour was black. So we've identified that one there as our neutral connection in our block of three. Remember, we like to leave the outside one for this flex that goes down to the pendant. OK, so that one's that's why that one's left blank. But that's a solid block of three for our neutral connections and they're black. Our loop connection, which is our permanent line in, permanent line out, and permanent line down to the switch. I know often on site people are calling that the live conductor, but it's actually the line conductor. And again, we've got a solid block of three. And this time, rather than being, as we've seen in our other videos, that connection being brown, pre-2004, the line connection was identified as red. So line in, line out, and line down to the switch. That block of three there. And then on our end one, this is our switching line conductor. Again, we could have used either of the terminals, it wouldn't have mattered, but again, we like to leave the outside one free. We've got a black conductor, which isn't a neutral, which is identified with some red oversleeving, which is our switching line conductor. And we know that again, the outside one generally is left for the flex that goes down to our pendant. So that would be on the outside one there. So if we've got a switching line this side and a neutral this side, when we operate our switch, we can turn on the lamp that's connected to the pendant. And as always, we've got a connection for our circuit protective conductors in here. And we've got three of those and they're identified with green and yellow sleeving. If you're looking at a really, really, really old one, you might find it's a solid green. So there are connections within our ceiling rows and pendant. Let's just move it down and look at the switch so we'll be taking our permanent line our switching line and cpc connection down to our one gang so one gang meaning we've got one switch on the front one gang and when i turn it over we've got a one-way switch our permanent line connection now in red comes in and we've put it into common it wouldn't matter in a one-way switch whether it was in common or normally identified the other one as l1 but we like to put it into common that's our permanent line connection and our black one again which now isn't a neutral is a switching line conductor and is identified by red sleeving and this time it's gone into a connection which is l1 sometimes it's identified as one way so that makes our switch so when we operate our switch we put the permanent line through the switch onto our black identified with red sleeve in our switching line conductor we turn on the light and obviously when we operate the switch we take that line connection off from here and the light goes off we have got a fully insulated system here but our circuit protective conductor is held within the earth terminal within the back of the box just in case it's changed either the switch or back box it's usually the switch isn't it the back boxes if they're sunk in the wall are metal and at college i used to make some of my learners change the light switch from a plastic one to a metal one meaning that even if they were going onto a plastic box, because that's generally what we had at college, the CPC needed disconnecting and connecting to the metal light switch because that was an exposed conductive part.